Please be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello. This is the case of Hoover versus Armour. Thank you, Jerome. Good day, everyone. Good day. Mr. Hoover, you have petitioned the court for a DNA test to prove to your fiance that you are the father of her eight-month-old daughter, Nova Lee. You need today's DNA results to keep your family together. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Armour, you stand here in court hoping and praying that Mr. Hoover is Nova Lee's biological father. But after a one-night stand with your ex, you are fearful that today's DNA results will reveal that Mr. Hoover is not Nova Lee's dad. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Hoover, you're here to prove paternity. Yes, Your Honor. Explain. Well, Your Honor, I love these girls. They're my world, and I, I just love everything. I just love everything about these women, and I just, I just want everything to be right, you know? And so you feel like you're doing everything possible, and it's so important to you to be the biological father. I see the tears in your eyes. Yes, uh, the, the, this would, I mean, this is make it or break it. If, you know, I just, I just want to know for her security's sake, too. Just, you know, she deserves to have all the love. It... Tell me... Tell me about the bond you have with Nova Lee. It's, I mean... Uh, she started grunting when she was a couple months old, and it, it wasn't a mean grunt or nothing. It was a playful one. And I just tested it. I grunted back, and now that's our thing. We grunt at each other. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, I can already tell she's got an imagination. That's yeah. beautiful. That's beautiful. So, Ms. Armour, you've watched Mr. Hoover step up for your daughter, love your daughter, be the father he's dreaming of being for your daughter. Yes, Your Honor. And yet, you know that there's a very real possibility he's not her biological father. As much as I am in love with him, as much as I want a future with him, I know she is not. I look at her and I don't see him. So tell me about your relationship with Mr. Hoover, Miss Armour. How did we end up here? Well, we met when I was working at a convenience store. He'd always come in and we'd talk. It wasn't really anything other than idle chatter. And one day he came in and said, hey, come here. And he pulled out a pink bracelet and he said, I made this for you. And it was the first time we ever really had a real conversation. And I didn't believe him because I'm like, oh, that's a cheesy pickup line. You just <laughs> went and bought this. And he really did. We ended up exchanging phone numbers. And within that week, we started to hang out. And we connected. And so this relationship sounds like a Cinderella story. <laughs> but if you live long enough, you know Cinderella story is a fairy tale. So how do we get to the point where you slept with somebody else? Well, a little bit after my birthday, we ended up breaking up. But within three days of us breaking up, I ended up hooking back up with my ex for a one-night stand. Oh, the dreaded ex. <laughs> well, we worked together, so it was hard to stay away from him. How soon after you reconnected with the ex did you find out you're pregnant? About a month or so, maybe two. And I actually found out when I was with Lee, I was scared and I told him, I think I'm pregnant. So we went and got a test and went to his house. And when it came up positive, we both just started to cry because I knew there might have been two possibilities. But when I went to the doctor, I went to two doctors. The first doctor gave me a conception date that would have only been Lee. Well, the second doctor told me that I was actually not as far along as what the first doctor told me. And her due date would have been July 4th. And so how far along were you at the time? That I was at the doctor's, I was about three, four months. So, now that Novalee's here, we have her birthday, we can take a look at the dates. Well, 
I actually was induced with her because my placenta was calciumnated, which means she could have been a stillborn if she would have stayed in until her due date. Okay. Let's take a look at the calendar. Baby Novalee's birthday was on June 27th. Yes, Your Honor. All right. That would make the window of conception approximately the third and fourth week in September, the 10th through the 18th. When were you intimate with Mr. Hoover? That entire time. When were you intimate with the other guy? In October. My actual due date was in July. So having her early being induced, I don't think the conception window would be in September. I believe it would be in October. And that's where I think she's wrong. I, to me, you look at it, um, I mean, we were together on October 6th still for her birthday and then a week after that. Were you intimate, the both of you, in October? Absolutely. Yes, Your Honor. You yes, were? Yes, Your Honor. So, that's still, even if the conception window is where you believe it may be a little later, Mr. Hoover is still a possibility. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So, let's go to the birth. Let's go to Nova Lee's birth. Who was there? Lee was, along with a couple family members and our babysitter. Okay. So, you were present, Mr. Hoover, for the birth. Yes, Your Honor. And you supported Ms. Armour the entire time? Yes, Your Honor. Did you sign the birth certificate? I did. Yes, Your Honor. You did? And so, why would you do that, Mr. Hoover, when you know you potentially... You may not be her biological father. I mean, uh, it didn't matter to me. I was there. And um, I, I love her. You know, I was telling myself, I'm gonna love this baby, too. Because uh, they all deserve the love that is required for their upbringing. All right, so, Ms. Armour, I need to ask you, did you tell your ex that you were giving birth, when you were gonna be induced, that Nova Lee was coming? Yes, Your Honor. You did? I did. And what was his response? Is, was he interested in being a father? He said, let me know if she's mine or not. That's all he said. But what did you say? Well, after I had her, me and Lee had discussed it, and I was mad at my ex at the time. I did not like his lifestyle. I didn't want him in her life if she was his or not. And Lee actually did not agree with that, but we decided he will be her father, and I messaged my ex and said, she's not yours. Oh. And he accepted that. He said, okay, thank you. All he said was, K. Wow. <laughs> so when did all this change? So you all made a decision. Mr. Hoover's gonna be the dad. We're gonna just text this ex and say, you know what, you're not the dad. Let him out the picture. Well, my ex didn't really come back into the picture until our babysitter got into a fight with Lee and then decided to message my ex and ask for baby pictures. Wait a minute, what? We were, we we were, were gonna talking. Do it. We were gonna do it regardless. Yes. And even at the beginning, like she said, I didn't want her yes, to text Yes, she said me. you thought it was a bad idea. I was trying to counsel her because I knew that her hormones were out of whack and that she wasn't thinking proper. And I just, I, I was trying to tell her, we need to make this right. We, this is not just about us. It's not just about, you know, her, her other possibility. It is about Nova Lee. And it, it is, it should always be about Nova Lee. Nova Lee's here now, it's her. But you still believe you're her biological father. Yeah, absolutely. But yes, you were supporting her during the window of time Dr. Jeff just informed me. During the window of time, it's called the baby blues. That's what it's called. What we feel when we just are out of whack. You knew at that time she was going through that mm -hmm. and you wanted to counsel her, be there for her. Yep. So you never really even had any intention of going forward with this plan of completely icing the ex. But then the babysitter decided, I'm gonna get in there and, and, and mediate this because I'm mad. She's trying to sink a ship. Oh, even though you believe you're the father, Mr. Hoover, the babysitter decided she was gonna tell the ex. She thought we wouldn't make it without her. 
She was trying to sink the ship. So she sent a, t a text to the ex and said, the baby looks like you. Can you send me some baby pictures? What happened? No. He got a message from our babysitter asking for baby pictures of him. And he said, well, why? She said, well, I just want to compare. And he said, are you kidding me? They didn't get a DNA test. And she let his mind wander with it. Had you told him you'd gotten a DNA test? No. But once he realized you didn't, he knew that you telling him he wasn't the father was based upon you just telling him that and not knowing for certain. Yes, Your Honor. So we were not able to get a statement from your ex, but we did get a statement from his mother. And this is what she sent to the court. My son would love to have a child, but he doesn't believe Tiffany's baby is his based off what she told my son. The day that Tiffany's baby was born, she sent a text to my son and said he wasn't the father. We were told by his doctor that he most likely would never have children. The medicine that he takes for his illnesses decreases his sperm count. This would be his miracle child. This matter needs to be settled soon as possible. My son wants to add his name to the child's birth certificate and change her last name if he is the father. This is the statement from his mother, Lynn Bird. Your Honor, you see what I'm saying? I mean, there is no possibility that it can be his baby. That is, that is my baby. All I she can see all when I look at it's her, though, is to him. See. So when you... You're seeing things. ...read the passage that talks about him taking medication that would reduce his sperm count and the doctor told him he would not likely be able to have children, that's something you feel like you can hang your hat on and believe I am the father. Is that, that correct? That's just one of many. There, there are many things. I, the way she looks, I, I see me in her so, all the Ms. time. So, Ms. Armour, I do have to ask you, because his mom wrote um, this very detailed statement indicating that your ex was told he'd probably never have children because of the medications. Does your ex have any children? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right, so the stakes are very high here. You know, they're very high because, Mr. Hoover, you said from the beginning you didn't want to follow through with Ms. Armour's plan to just tell the ex to go away and that you're the father. Even though your name is on that birth certificate, you still feel it's appropriate to have the testing and to truly get the answer, even though you've said you're going to be there regardless. Your Honor, babies change lives. And if that's, if that's his baby, that could change his life. He could, he could literally turn himself around with her. And he has that right. And he needs to know if that right is his. And I think it is quite incredible to not just put Nova Lee first, but another man. You don't, we don't hear that a lot. Someone care about the welfare of their, the person they love's ex? It's awesome. We don't hear that. That's I, amazing. Well, that is the problem with the world today. People don't think of others. And you gotta put yourself in their position. You better go ahead and preach, Mr. Hoover. <laughs> You preaching the gospel up in here today. You don't got enough film for that. Uh, we don't have enough time, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, really, you're right. And I think it's beautiful. And I'm so... I'm grateful, no matter what the result is, that Nova Lee will have you in her life. But I do believe that there's still a lot at stake because your name is on that birth certificate as the legal father. So now... The only thing left to do is to determine whether Mr. Hoover or your ex, Josh, is the biological father of Nova Lee. And I have those results for you. Jerome, may I have the envelope, please? <laughs> These results were prepared by DNA Diagnostics, and they read as follows. In the case of Hoover versus Armour. If you want more episodes of Paternity Court, make sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell. When it comes to eight-month-old Novali Hartley Hoover, 
It has been determined by this court. Mr. Hoover, you are not the father. I'm so sorry. We needed to know. Okay. Stuff happens. We can do. I'm very sorry, now. Mr. Hoover. <laughs> I'm not sorry. I got him no matter what. That's I mean, that's my family. I am so um, impressed by the way you love and accept one another unconditionally. And yet every relationship runs into those hiccups and those barriers and those obstacles where you still need that good old practice of communication. Wouldn't be called life without it. Wouldn't be called life without it. I just love you, Mr. Hoover. That is the truth. I'm gonna give you this robe and this gavel in a minute. You got some good advice. <laughs> But, but no, really, and I want you to take advantage of the counseling and the resources so you can keep your family together in a healthy, happy home. Thank I wish you. you all the very best. Court is adjourned.